Welcome back to Double Dance Cross Country Skiing podcast for the episode the day before the World Cup 2023-2024 season officially kicks off in Ruka Kusamo and today I'm gonna do a little preview for that weekend. We're gonna start with a quick recap of events in Beitostolen and Yelivare from the weekend before. Uh, then move on to squats delegated by national associations to talk about who's here and who's missing. And finally, a few words about Ruka in itself, the courses, the distances and who's favorites. If you already are up to date with what happened last weekend in Beitostolen and Jelivare during the Norwegian and Swedish season premieres, uh, you can skip to the preview, there are timestamps down below, you can check them out. But we're gonna start with, I'm gonna start with the quick recap of what happened in Sweden and Norway. Uh, there were competitions from Friday throughout the whole weekend. Uh, we had classic sprints on Friday, then 10k classic interval starts on Saturday and finally on Sunday there was another 10k interval start but this time it was freestyle and we're just gonna quickly go through to see uh, who's in good shape because these competitions just like the weekend in Munio in Finland two weeks already ago almost two weeks uh, by the time I'm recording it um, they really set the benchmark for what can we expect from athletes in the early part of the season. Not everybody, not every nation were present at any of this. So, for example, Americans, like we don't know in what shape Jesse Diggins is, for example, right now, because she didn't compete neither in Munio, neither in Yelibare and in Beito Stolen. So we'll just have to see. Uh, how she performs in Ruka. Uh, the American squad usually takes some time to get into the season. It wasn't that bad last season because Jesse already won in this during the second weekend in Lehammer the 10k interval uh, freestyle, but in Ruka it was a little bit of a mech, or although the 20k was really strong from her, the pursuit. But uh, coming back to the recap. Uh, we start with sprints and that really started strong in Beto Stolen. Uh, so during the recap of Munio competitions, I said that uh, Ingrid Andrea Gulbrandsen, uh, the junior, uh, she competed at junior championships last year, uh, under 23. Juniors are under 20, I think. I think that's the proper category names. Uh, I said that if she performs well in Beitostol and she really could secure the place for her in uh, in World Cup for Ruka because in Munio she was great. She was third in sprint and she was in top 10 of the classic race and she started in Beitostol really strong. She won the qualifying hits, the, the qualifying run uh, and she won it by over 5 seconds. Uh, she put over seven seconds in Kristina Stavas Skistad, who was a phenomenal in the latter part of last year. She won like four last sprint races. So really strong performance from Gulbrandsen. Uh, in the end, she finished second, although initially we thought she will be third because she finished third on track. The sprint was won by Skistad. So she's still in good form, but she wasn't like real dominant uh, because from last year's season, if she would hold the same level, you would expect to absolutely smack, smack it from her. Uh, and she wasn't like clear above everyone. It was quite close between her, Gulbrandsen, also Lotta Udnesveng, who in the end was disqualified for skating uh, in the final. And third spot went to Anna Svensson, who almost won in Munio. On men's side, it was a bit more... No, it actually wasn't that dominant. Uh, in sprint itself, uh, from Eric Valnes, he battled out throughout the whole uh, day with Ansgar Evensen. 
uh, they were quite close in sem semi-finals. Ansgar won this one, but in the final, uh, Valnes beat him, but just by eight hundredths of the second. Third was Evan Nordhook, so a cl clean podium from Norway. Uh, first international was Richard Jouf on fifth for France. Uh, also good performance from Mats William Jensen. Now, that's not really a well-known name globally, but he's also going to Ruka following this good performance in Beethoven. And in Sweden, where it's pretty much a kingdom of sprint in the women's field for already a couple of years. Uh, I mean, when was the last time non-Swedish girl won any medal? So Planitza was Zundling, Beijing Olympic was Sundling, Obersdorf was Sundling, then 2020 we didn't have anything. 2019 Zefeld. Oh, that was Mike and Kaspersen Falla, but 2018 was Stina Nilsson. So, uh, yeah, Swedish girls are very dominant in sprint for the last couple of years. And this sprint is really who is who uh, for the beginning of the season. In the end, it was Jonas Zundling, but just in front of Emma Ribbon. They were quite close for the whole uh, day. Uh, close in qualifying and close in the final. They distance Maya Dahlqvist uh, with a quite healthy gap, almost three seconds in the final. Uh, so Dahlqvist wasn't able to unleash her uh, good finish because I think that Dahlqvist might have a better 100, 200 meter dash, uh, like final push to the line, uh, better than Zundling and Ribbon. But overall, during the one and a half k course, uh, they are better if the course is enough demanding. They have a bit more of an engine, and also good performance for from Frida Carlson. Now, before the competitions, she said that she really wants to perform well here in Yelivare because she wants to uh, do the sprint race in Ruka, kind of suggesting that. Uh, she might actually be targeting the whole World Cup, not just Tour de Ski or uh, the distance classification, the mini globe for the distance. Uh, but she might actually target the whole World Cup. It's certainly possible, but she just needs to really excel at the distance races and also bring home some points from the sprints because after last year, uh, change of... Uh, point assignment, don't know how to say it, uh, after that change where uh, now they give points to top 50 not to top 30 and the gaps between places are so small, the consistency and being able to get points high positions but not like top 3, even just top 10 in every single competition whether that's sprint or distance race, it's really important, that's how Tyril Venk won last year. But it's still certainly possible for a distance racer like Carlson, who has that little bit of sprinting pedigree to win it. Uh, but uh, rounding, up the, rounding up the sprints uh, with the men's field, uh, it was won actually not by Edwin Anger, who for me was a heavy, heavy favorite. Uh, the best one on the day was Marcus Grote, uh, best one in the qualifying hits, also best one in the final, and fair was... Alvar Milbach, uh, who's, if you don't know him, he's 17 years old and he's already uh, competing in the marathons, in ski classics and stuff. And he's just a, probably the biggest, not even probably, he is the biggest talent, the biggest prospect in the world of cross-country skiing. But with that, we end Friday and we, vo we move on swiftly to Saturday uh, when we had 10K Classic. Uh, both in Beitostan and Yelivar, the competitions during this weekend were exactly the same in two different locations. We start with the female field and that one was won by Heidi Venk, just in front of Astrid Eirish Lind, the medalist from Planitza from World Championships last year. Uh, she, Astrid was actually leading on all the intermediates, uh, Heidi uh, started way more composed 
and she slowly cr crawled her, her way back and finished just five seconds in front of Astrid. Third was Margaret Bergane, good performance from Delphine Claudel uh, for her standards, she was fourth on almost 40 seconds, that doesn't sound too good, but she's definitely way better in freestyle uh, and the disparity between classic and freestyle uh, re in regards to her are quite big. She is really able to produce really good performances in freestyle. Uh, in the men's field, it was another day of Eric Valnes. Uh, he won almost 20 seconds in front, in front of Emil Iversen, so definitely better weekend for Emil than the one in Muno. He didn't look too good in Finland, but here's a second place for the winner of 50k in Oberstdorf uh, two years ago. And third was Andrew Musgrave, the Brit, uh, followed closely by Martin Jenget, Harald Amundsen. We all, uh, we've seen them all in Munio. Uh, a bit worse day for Matis Stenshagen, who looked quite good in Munio, uh, a bit worse weekend for him. Uh, Kruger finished 11, but that's classic, so uh, not uh, that was quite expected to be a bit worse day. He was expected to perform better on Sunday in his favorite skate, although 10k is still not really enough for him. Uh, no Claybog here, by the way. Mm, he skipped the competitions. I'm not sure if that was his plan altogether or he just was taking it easy because of COVID. But also no Paul Goldberg on Saturday. And we go back to Sweden for the 10k Classic. Now, uh, this had really a reduced field because we didn't see Kalle Halvarsson. He didn't plan to do 10k Classic. And we also were missing William Poroma, who crashed quite badly during the sprint the day before and he pulled out of competitions both on Saturday and Sunday. He didn't look too comfortable afterwards, but he is going to Ruka, so the uh, injury wasn't too bad. And, but the 10k classic in Yelivare for men was won by Edwin Anger just in front of Johan Hekström, not even 10 seconds, so close field. Mm. Third was Björn Sandström, uh, another interesting name in the fifth place, Truls Giselman. He's going to Ruka, mm, and our uh, big talent Alvar Milbak was in eighth. So another good performance from the 17-year-old. And we finished Saturday with 10K Classic of Women. Uh, that one was won by Ebba Anderson, but again she wasn't really challenged because. Uh, Frida Carlson decided not to do the Saturday competition. Uh, she was doing 10k freestyle on Sunday, but yeah, uh, without Frida, Ebba didn't really have anyone that could challenge her. The second was Ebba Ribom, who was doing okay last season in distance. Um, she had a quite good leg in the relay at World Championships. The third was Lin Svan, who interestingly skipped the sprint. And we know that Lin is more of a sprinter, so maybe she, she just want to uh, get that bit more of info on her distance performance. We'll see about that in Ruka. And now we're only left with the Sunday competitions to finish off the quick recap of the Scandinavian premieres. Uh, we had 10k freestyle on sun Sunday and in Beethoven the men's field uh, race was won by Ivar Tiltheim Andersen. Uh, he was leading almost on the all intermediates. So another uh, good performance from him. He won the World Cup in Lillehammer last year, also the 10k freestyle interval. He was in the breakaway group of uh, him, Simon Hextad Kruger and Hans Christel Holund in the Holmen Kollen 50. 
He was unfortunately dropped from that uh, group, leaving the duo of Kruger and Holund to battle it out for the win. And Iver uh, was unfortunately caught by uh, Nienget and I believe it was Tenset. So he dropped out of the podium. But he's got a couple of very strong races last winter and that's another good indication of good form from him. Now, uh, second was actually the Frenchman Hugo Lapali, only uh, not even seven seconds uh, behind Iver, and third was also a not really, uh, not really an established international name of Jan Thomas Jensen. Uh, Simon Kruger was only at fourth place, uh, ten seconds down on Andersen. Uh, now, that's uh, that's a little bit underwhelming, but. 10k is also quite short for Kruger. Mm, you would expect him to do be a little bit better in the 20k in Ruka, which is coming this week, this Sunday. Uh, in the women's field, it was finally the day of Astrid Eirish Lind. She lost out to Heidi the day before. On Sunday, she was the best, although by a slight margin, only seven. 7 tenths of a second in front of Delphine Claudel, who I mentioned would be much better in freestyle. Uh, she was in front of Heidi Wenk, who finished on 5.5 seconds to Slint. So Heidi and Slint could, uh, I, I think they will be well into top 10 in both distance races in Ruka. And Claudel, she could be also uh, well up there in the freestyle mustard because it's a master this time not a push suit like it's always but we'll talk about that in the latter part of this pod uh, further down Sofia Laukli in fourth so a little bit better than in Munio I would say and fifth was Bergane so p5 in freestyle p3 in classic good weekend from Bergane uh, and we're left with two competitions in Yelivare the first one was the men's race no Poroma uh, here, but we've got at least Kalle Halvarsson back. He didn't compete on Saturday, but it was not him, neither any other Swedish athlete to win the race. It was actually Cyril Fendrich uh, from Switzerland, just three seconds in front of Kalle. And third was Truls Giselman. And I think especially this, this race uh, bought him the race in Ruka. Really strong weekend from uh, Truls. And we finish off with the women race. Now that one was supposed to be your classic Frida Carlson versus Ebba Anderson duel, but Moa Moa Ilar actually decided to spoil the party and she won that one marginally by 3.6 seconds in front of Frida. Ebba was way further down, uh, not position wise, by time wise, 25 seconds to Frida, almost 29 to Moa. Um, I'm not sure if that's fatigue carried over from the day before because we're still early in the season and I would expect Ebba to perform a little bit better even ju- uh, even after a little fatigue. Uh, but we'll see, maybe she was just taking it easy this day. Although she faded uh, a bit into the race, uh, she definitely didn't split this one negatively. It was more on the positive side. But yeah, really good race from Moa and we'll see how she will perform in Ruka. Out of, the, out of this three, I still would bet more on Frida and even Ebba than Moa, but uh, Moa could be well into top five fights in the distance races based on that performance. And that would be it for the recap of the competitions uh, from last weekend. Now we jump into a uh, quick uh, squats analyzing analyzes who's going to ruka now uh, that's a little bit different for different teams uh, they announce it uh, some of them announce it on their social media others just do a press release some articles and stuff and we start with um, uh, the norwegian team so we've got bergane we've got gulbrandsen mervold Sistad, svensen uh, Venk, Foschnes, Calvo, who was not in uh, Beethoven, but she's training all and good. 
uh, Astrid Schlind, uh, that's not a surprise, Anna Appelqvist, Stenset and Heidi Wenk. Uh, two athletes that we're missing here are, I would say, uh, two major missings are Tyril Udnes Wenk. She's, uh, I'm not sure if she still has COVID or she's just recovering from it, but there was a little bit of an outbreak in Norwegian team during uh, around the Munio competitions, not just around the athletes that were in Munio, but in general, at, uh, Norwegian athletes like Kleibo, uh, Tenset also had, yeah, quite a lot of these COVID positives results in uh, Norwegian team and Tyril was one of them. And we're also missing Ingvild that Esberg. Now she had uh, problems of a different nature. Uh, but I hope we'll see her later in the season. On the men's side, uh, I wouldn't say we're missing anyone. So Clayboy is here, he wasn't in Beto Stolen, but yeah, I'm not sure if he just wasn't planning to uh, race in Beto Stolen or he just decided to take it as a not compete there because he also had COVID. So we could be a little bit uncertain about his performance, but he will be there. Uh, among him... Uh, there's Amundsen, Ansgar Evensen, he's for sprint, Iversen, good form in Beito, a bit worse in Munio, but he uh, seems to be picking up the form. Evan Nordhook, strong both in Munio and uh, Beito Stolen, Schurrete, Diedrich Tenset, he will like 10k uh, on Saturday, Tiltheim Andersen, Goldberg, Goldberg, who's, I didn't mention Goldberg a lot, uh, during the Beto Stolen recap, and that's because he didn't really perform there. So, so uh, he had not too good of a weekend in Munio, not too good of a weekend in Beto Stolen. So his form is a little bit of a question mark. Um, apart from him, Mats William Jensen, Simon Kruger, Martin Jenget, Taugbel and Walner. So a healthy amount of athletes. Not all of them are will be competing, obviously in all competitions because of the limit uh, we also have the graphic from the swedish team and no one's really missing here uh, we even have william poroma so his injury from the sprint doesn't seem to be too big of an issue mm, no jens burman but he the, he wasn't really performing in uh, yelivare so uh, him missing is not really a surprise. On the women's side, we have Anderson, we have Carlson, we have Ilar. So that's your major threats for the distance races. And Zundling, Zvan, Ribom, even Moa Lundgren uh, for the sprints, and Hackstrom and Dalkvist. So, yeah, uh, on a very good day, they can take up like the whole podium, even top four of the sprint race. Uh, when it comes to different teams, I'm just I'm not gonna mention the whole squad. It's just about if anyone's missing. For Finland, we have Krista Parmakowski, we have Joni Meki for sprint. We also have the uh, Kertu and Ivon Niskanen. So uh, no one's really missing, not from the majors. Uh, now, Team USA announced their squads in a bit different path. Or even up to Trondheim. But I don't see anyone's missing. J Jesse Diggins is there. Julia Kern for sprints. Yeah, they will be good. They will be good. Uh, Italians. Now, Katarina Gans was performing really well in Munio. And she will be in Ruka on men's team. Pellegrino. Uh, he could be good for that 20k master if the pace is not too hard. I mean, the course is hard, but if there is no one to really drive it throughout the 20k, uh, he might uh, be able to snatch some good points. Uh, French, uh, so we look at Claudel for the distance race, but we also look for the sprint team, Luca Chanava, Richard Jouf, Reno G. Uh, they will be good and they're all here in Ruka. Uh, apart from that, maybe also uh, let's mention Germany, Germany team. I don't think anyone's missing. Hennig, Karl, Fink, yeah, they're all here. Mm. 
yeah in terms of who's missing that's pretty much it which is real good we all want to see top tier athletes compete from november till march and especially in a year when there is no world champs or olympic games we won't see uh, someone like teresa johauk used to do especially uh, do a little bit of starts early in the winter and then before tour de ski go out for individual training and come back at the olympics or world champs and with that said we can go straight into the setup of the whole weekend we start tomorrow on friday with a classic sprint i think it's around 10 a.m european time uh so early but not super early uh, just enough that you can watch the whole sprint competition and then go watch I think later in the evening there is ski jumping I mean the whole Nordic sports kick off together in Ruka uh, cross country ski jumping Nordic combined you name it and yeah we have sprint classic mm, now on the women's side uh, we have favorites uh, like sweets like Sundling, Ribom, uh, also Schistat, and it could be real close between them because we didn't really see anybody uh, compete both with Swedes and uh, with Norwegians. Uh, the form of Schistat, I think it, she's not at her best uh, yet, uh, at the shape that uh, she was in the latter part of last season. Sundling maybe also not, but I think it will be uh, one two for Sweden with uh, Ribom and Sundling taking uh, this spot and I'm gonna go with Sundling because the course is real hard uh, in Ruka every every distance is real hard in Ruka with the course is really tough and that also applies to the uh, sprinting field mm. And also, and the odds from the market uh, support uh, my way of thinking. With Zundling just ahead of Ribom and Shishtat, and the rest being far, far away. Um, maybe on a good day, someone like Gulbrandsen or Dalkvist can challenge the top three, but I don't really see that. Uh, in terms of men, uh, now. The form of Claybo is a bit of a mystery because of that COVID, uh, but he is a clear favorite uh, from the books. And yeah, it's hard to bet against him, but Valnes already beat him here, uh, I think it was three years ago in the campaign 2020 2021, the one with Obersdorf World Champs. Uh, Valnes beat him here the next year he was beaten uh, Claybo was beaten by Terentev last year he finally won it uh, he is displayed as a clear favorite I'm not sure he is as clear as he is because Valnes is looking real strong but apart from them yeah no one else should come close to two of them although that sprint everything can happen broken poles, uh, crashes, although the course is not too technical. And that would be it for the sprint on Friday. It's pretty straightforward. The favorites are quite clear. On Sunday, we have a 10K Classic. Last year, it was won by Claybo on the men's side and Ebba Anderson in a tight duel with Carlson. And this year, uh, I wouldn't say Anderson is, uh, it's not possible for her to win, but my favorite is, contrary to uh, what the odds says, uh, my favorite is Katarina Henig. She performed real well in Munio, uh, while Frida and Ebba, uh, Eb Ebba won the 10K Classic, clear of Ribom, but that was Ribom, not Carlson or uh, Ilar, quite frankly. And in freestyle, she uh, she faded quite badly. I'm also not gonna bet on Carlson, although I see her uh, 
also winning it's certainly quite possible but yeah for this one i would go with katarina hennig and the pod but the podium will be filled with swedes uh, carlson and anderson i don't really see anybody further down challenging the top three maybe more Aguilar, but i think that performance in Yelivar really was an exception but she could be into top five we also don't really know what's the form from Anesirsti Calvo, but I also don't see her uh, going up to top three in this race, maybe on Sunday, but not in this one. On the men's side, now this one is tricky because uh, in theory we have two clear favorites in form of Ivon Iskanen and Kleibu. Now Ivon Iskanen had a great 10k in Munio, indicating that he's back, uh, he's... Uh, in a way better shape that, uh, than he was last year after recovering from COVID in December. But that's only 10k. And on regular day, I would always bet on Claybo against Niskanen in 10k Classic. Uh, but his preparation, Claybo's, uh, was really affected. And also, uh, the odds doesn't really give a lot of chances to Valness. But he could be, uh, I would say that top three is certainly possible for him. Although that course is quite hard. Uh, I don't believe in Paul Goldberg recovering so early from that bad form in the early season. So I would still go for Niskanen. And Kleb Klebo, I would say he either will be, he either will win or will be like outside top 10. I don't I don't see him getting like P3 before. That's that doesn't really sound mm, sensible. And then on uh, Sunday we have uh, the finale of the first weekend uh, 20k must start in freestyle and for all the previous editions it was uh, usually a pursuit after the 10k Mm, sometimes it was after 10k classic on the previous day and sometimes it was a final stage of Ruka triple so also the results of the sprint mattered now this year it's a must start and for women field i don't think it changes a lot uh, because i i predict that someone like a banderson or maybe also jesse diggins we just go to the front, drive it from the uh, from the start, and it could result in a bunch finish. But we can also see a late breakaway from someone like Carson. She liked to do that uh, three, four kilometers to the finish attacks last year in Ruka, uh, in Lillehammer, later in the year in Obersdorf. Just like yeah it almost became like a trademark punch from Frida Carlson to attack in the longer runs 3-4 case to the finish. It worked certainly well for her in Ruka last year because she won like 30 seconds in front of Ebba. This year it will be a little bit harder because of the mustard, but yeah, she's, uh, she is my favorite. I don't have odds for that race. Uh, but I'm going for Carlson on the 20k and uh, three days uh, three days uh, weekend I don't think it's long enough uh, even for Carlson to get too fatigued because in uh, longer events like Tour de Ski like World Champs she tends to perform way worse in the latter part than at the beginning but three days should be okay even with the sprint on the men's side, that's tricky because uh, you would need someone who is really good in freestyle, in, in a good form, to really drive it to avoid like a big bunch uh, finish. That could be Simon Hextad Kruger, although his form is a little bit questionable. And yeah, but I, I can see. Uh, Kruger driving it, but if Claybo is in a good form, if, if he wins both sprint and is 
in top two of the classic race. I don't see Kruger dropping Claybo and he will just finish it off in a sprint uh, like he did last year, although that was pursuit. Mm. Yeah, um, maybe maybe Anderson, but no, nah, I don't really see it at 20k. We're also uncertain about the form. Uh, William Poroma is in distance because we couldn't see him in uh, Yelivare, but uh, he really had a strong finish to the season last year. And yeah, if he carries over, then he might he might spoil, spoil the party for the Norwegians because even though I mentioned Pellegrino earlier when uh, going through the Italian team, uh, I see it highly unlikely that Kruger and co will let pure sprinters like Pellegrino uh, reach the finish in a group. Claybo probably will hang on depending on his shape, but I'm betting more on him hanging on and finishing it from the pack. That being said, Pellegrino probably won't last in the group up until the finish. But that would be it for the preview. The World Cup kicks off tomorrow. We have an exciting weekend and the whole season right in front of us. Uh, can't wait for that to unveil. Uh, we are waiting long enough throughout the spring, summer and autumn for the winter season to kick off. Uh, I think Alpine skiing is already well under go, uh, but the Nordic sports are just kicking off uh, in Ruka. That will be for sure an exciting season with, a, with no major pinch point like world champs or uh, Olympic games. I mean, ski jumping has the ski flying world champs but the cross-country skiing doesn't have anything apart from Tour de Ski, which is kind of like a uh, Four Hills tournament for uh, ski jumping. So the intensity should be quite level throughout the season, which hopefully will make ra every race, every regular World Cup race more exciting than it sometimes is because of athletes dropping out of the World Cup to prime for the main event of the season uh, make sure to leave down the down in the comments your favorites who's gonna uh, win in ruka and also your favorites for the whole world cup mm, the plan for me is to upload the pod every day there is a competition uh, just after the competition so on friday on saturday and on sunday we'll see how th this one will go um, yeah, and let's hopefully hear tomorrow, but until then.